Hi, this is Mrs. Robel. Um, this is chapter 15, Energy and Chemical Change. So in this chapter, we're going to be actually tying everything together. We're going to be looking at how is energy released or absorbed using chemical reactions. Now, in order to understand that, we're going to look at the following objectives. Um, first, you're going to make sure that you understand what is energy and the types of energy, which are kinetic and potential. Then you're going to determine whether potential energy is lost or gained in a chemical reaction. And then lastly, you're going to actually calculate the amount of heat that is absorbed or released by a substance with temperature change. Okay, nature of energy. Energy is the ability to do work or produce heat. Um, there's two classifications. You've probably heard this before in some of your middle school classes, kinetic and potential. <clears throat> kinetic energy is the energy of motion, so anything that is moving is considered kinetic, whereas potential energy is stored energy. So when I raise an object, obviously I'm storing potential energy. The moment I drop it, I'm releasing it and turning it into kinetic energy. Okay, we have in chemistry what we call compositional potential energy. And what that means is it depends on the chemical bonds within a compound. So in a chemical reaction, you can either store energy or release energy. If you burn wood, that's an example of releasing energy. So there's heat that is being given off by that process. Plant growth. So as a plant grows using sunlight, it's actually storing energy as it grows. Okay. Now, in order to understand this, we need to refine a couple things. Um, we call what, what we're looking at a system. So that means that when we're looking at a chemical reaction, the reaction itself is called the system. And anything outside of that chemical reaction is considered the surroundings. Okay. In addition to that, we need to define what is heat. And typically in chemistry, we look at the calorie. Now, it's not the calorie that you consume with food. Instead, it's um, the lo lowercase c. Um, the uppercase c is actually how many calories you eat. The lowercase c, we're looking at the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Now, the, the big calorie is a thousand little calories. Energy. So SI unit of energy, we typically use the French term joule, and you've heard this before. One calorie is 4.184 joules. I will give you that. Um, if you were to convert 65 calories to joules, how much would that be? Um, another possibility is how many calories is 457 joules? So um, do that on your own, and I want you to bring that to class. Okay, here are some conversions. Um, once again, I will give you these conversions so that you know how to use them. All right, now, how do we calculate heat? We look at Q, which is heat. We're gonna multiply it by C, which is specific heat, times mass times delta T. That means um, T final minus T initial. So M is whatever um, object we are measuring, and that has to be in grams. And then you have to be given specific heat. And specific heat typically is joules divided by grams times Celsius. Okay, here's a typical calculation. So they want to know how many joules are required to heat 1.5 kilograms of iron from 15 to 37C. So this is the formula that you need to know and we're gonna apply it. So notice that um, you have the specific heat which is given to you times um, kilograms, but we have to convert it to grams. So we multiply it by a thousand. And then lastly, T final, which is 37 degrees minus 15, gives us 22 Celsius. When you multiply all three together, you get 15,000 joules. Okay, so let's summarize. Energy is the capacity to do work or to produce heat. Chemical potential energy is either stored in chemical bonds or released, depending on what's going on. 
Um, and then lastly, we're looking at the um, heat calculation, which is specific heat, or C, times mass times delta T.